मेडिवल यूरोप हाउ द डेवलपमेंट्स बिगैन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो लेट्स बिफोर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द डेवलपमेंट्स इन द देन रोमन एम्पायर लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक टर्म्स सो वेन वी फोकस ऑन द टाइम लाइन इन हिस्ट्री वी से इट इज अ पीरियड आइदर बिफोर क्राइस्ट और आफ्टर क्राइस्ट सो बर्थ ऑफ क्राइस्ट बिकम्स इंपॉर्टेंट एंड देर फॉर क्रिश्चैनिटी एंड द रोल ऑफ द मिडवल यूरोप इन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ क्रिश्चैनिटी इज highly important now the period before the birth of jesus christ is known as bc we also call it as before christ or bce before common era however the period after the birth of christ is known as ad that is anno domini also called as ce or common era now the middle ages is what would be our focus today this middle age varies from the region of asia and europe and what we have in the regions of india so we'll have a comparative understanding and also a simultaneous understanding of how kingdoms rose in different regions of the world so if we focus on the region of asia and europe from 600 to 1600 ad is considered as the period of middle ages or what we call as the medieval age but when we talk about india we classify this into early medieval and later medieval overall the medieval age is 100 years more or 100 years later then the medieval ages as considered in the region of asia and europe so that starts from 600 the medieval age in india starts from 700 ad last until 750 Uh, 1750 AD, so 1750 AD. Now this whole period is further subdivided into two: the later and the early. The early starts from 700 to 1200 AD, and from 1200 AD to 1750 AD, we have the later medieval period. During this later medieval period, we have seen how Mughal Empire came to power in India. so all those developments would be understand as part of the medieval indian history now to begin with the region of roman empire as you can see in this map it was not just the region of present day italy where you have rome as the capital but it was more of the region of portugal france germany uh, and then italy and then parts of northern regions of african uh, region close to the mediterranean not only this this whole region was further divided into two sections the western europe versus the eastern europe so let's focus on the region of western europe first as you can see the region close to italy then we have the region of spain france uh, portugal and the northern regions of the african nations these all which are marked in light pink color here reveal the region of western roman empire by 1500 ad we have seen that the western roman empire was ruined was crumbled because of the barbarian invasions however the eastern roman empire which was uh, predominantly the region that people spoke greek so again very very interesting to note some of the things here the western european region was the region where latin was the predominant language the people were more traditional because they focused on uh, more stringent forms however the region of eastern uh roman empire which you can see in the purple shades here was a region where people were relatively less uh, traditional in nature now this western roman empire was under the emperor maximian maximian was the main ruler in the western european region however in the eastern european region we have seen diclothian as one of the major rulers now therefore as you can see here the region was clearly divided into two the western roman and the eastern roman western roman was the region of rome however the eastern 
Roman area was also known as Byzantine Empire during that time. So another important term that you must remember here is the Byzantine Empire, which connotes the eastern uh, region, the eastern Europe, uh, the eastern Roman region during that time. Now, interesting to note that Western Rome around 500 AD was destroyed by the attacks of barbarians. However, the Eastern Roman survived and it survived for nearly 1000 more years. The Western Roman region was broken down into smaller kingdoms, smaller provinces and uh, here gladiators were very very important. The role of gladiators were very very important. They were the professional fighters in the region of Rome. Some of these gladiators were known as triumphant gladiators and they were the ones who were considered uh, as celebrities in the walls, in the paintings and uh, gladiator spectacles were most popular entertainment means in the region of Rome or the Roman Empire during that time. As we have seen in the region of Eastern Roman, which remained for nearly thousand more years, then the Western Roman Empire, this was where Byzantine region developed under Diclothean, this region developed Greek as you can see this was the region of Greece and the region of uh, uh, the region surrounding Jerusalem as well. So this was the region where uh, people were relatively less traditional, preferably more liberal in attitude. Now corresponding to the region of Roman Empire, there was Gupta Empire in India and this Gupta Empire was declining because the later kings of Gupta period were not that strong. They were weak, they were incompetent and therefore Hun invasion started to have an important place in the Indian subcontinent during that time. At the same time we have seen rise of Arab or the rise of Arab civilization under Prophet Muhammad and this was somewhere around the 7th century AD. So with the rise of uh, the Arab civilization we have seen rise of Islam and it is believed that Arab civilization is considered to be one of the most advanced civilizations of that time. So overall we can say during that time Two major religions were powerful. One was the Christianity developing in the region of Roman Empire. Contemporary to that was Islam developing in the region of Arabian Peninsula. And then slowly and gradually invasion from or expansion from the regions to the neighboring areas and the spread of religion started. However, we have seen that the socio-political life was very different during that time. In India, this time was witnessed as a time where Zamidari system was prominent. However, it was not just the Zamidari system in India. At the same time, contemporary to it in the Roman Empire was the system of serfs. These serfs were the people who had to obey the orders of their lords and were not granted any uh, anything without the permission of the lords. The status of the serfs in Roman Empire was much much worse as compared to the uh, zamidars in the zamidari system in the region of India. Now, be it anywhere, both of the regions witnessed a definite socio-political change. So what was the consequence? The trade and commerce activities started to decline. Land became predominantly important. It was one of the major sources of property. Also, the old kingdoms, the Western Roman Empire, as we saw, had smaller kingdoms. These small old kingdoms started to dissociate and there were new kingdoms which were rising to power. At this time, feudalism started to develop. Feudalism was a system where peasants used to get land or uh, protection from the lords and in lieu of that, they had to provide the service or uh, fight for the lords in return. So that was a system of feudalism. 
Feudalism first developed in the regions of Europe and slowly and gradually it then percolated from the region of Western Europe where it developed to the regions of Eastern Europe. As we heard and as we saw, Eastern Europe remained much more stable as compared to Western Europe. So dissociation definitely started but it originated from Western Europe. Also, most of the development was in the rural area. There were towns and trade which played very less importance, very, very little importance and exploitation of the peasantry was indeed there. So the system of serfdom in Europe was equivalent to the zamindari system where again the exploitation of peasantry took place but definitely the way and the conditions that happened were very very different. Similarly we have seen that Roman uh, Empire started to conquest over the region of Palestine or the region close to Jer uh, Jerusalem. Now Pompey the Great was the Roman king. He basically did a siege of Jerusalem and this campaign crossing the Mediterranean Sea, this campaign became very very successful and this was the campaign led by Pompey the Great and this campaign as a result of this campaign he conquered the region of Jerusalem or then Palestine and the end of Jew uh, Jewish independence was witnessed. More than 12,000 Jews were killed within a period of just three months in contrast to very few soldiers being killed from the Roman Empire. Also, Judea, which was the region there, became part of the Roman Empire. So, how Pompey the Great from the Roman Empire had his influence over the region of Jerusalem and Jerusalem or Judea became the part of the Roman Empire. So this was how the medieval developments took place. Contemporary to the development of medieval Europe were the developments that were seen in parts of India and the Arab region. In the upcoming classes, we would discuss more about how Christianity rose and the uh, changes with the crusade policies.